What I really enjoy about Desmos is that it gives you a simple interface to explore interesting shapes. So for example, I, I really started to use Desmos in the classroom this year and I decided to have my students look at the Astrid. And what was really great about it is that um, students were able to look at simple patterns to construct the Astrid piece by piece in a way that made sense for them. So for example, um, students might start off in the first quadrant and here in this folder, when they start to write the equations, you can see at the beginning, it might be a little tedious to write this line right here. You've got to look at the slope and the intercept. You've got to cut up the domain from zero through one. But by the time you're really on the second line, uh, what students start to notice is that, well, there's a pattern here. And the layout in Desmos really helps you see that, right? That the y-intercepts are going 10, 9, 8, and the slopes are going 10 over 1, 9 over 2, 8 over 3. And the domains are constrained from 0 through 1, then 0 through 2, and so on and so forth. So what seems to be a tedious task, right, becomes enjoyable because you can see the pattern here as you're setting up your equations. And then once you have the first quadrant, you can explore the relationship between the first quadrant and other quadrants. For example, if you want to look at the second quadrant right here, many students realize that, okay, instead of negative slopes, like in the first quadrant, I have positive slopes. And then if I go to the third quadrant, Right? I can say, okay, well here we're going to have negative slopes again, but we're also having negative y-intercepts. And in the fourth quadrant, we've got positive slopes with negative intercepts. But what's really fun as well is that some students look at it in different ways. They might look at uh, the symmetry between maybe the first and the third quadrants and realize that in both cases here, these slopes and intercepts are inverses of each other. Right, So there's different ways to construct it. But some students don't want to write all those equations. So a nice challenge is to think about what's a way to do it in the least amount of equations possible. Well, what's really nice, I guess another feature I really like here is the list feature in Desmos, which includes a list of numbers in your equations. So with a little tinkering here, students can realize, students realize that, that you can actually create the asteroid with four equations. But then if you want to go further, if you want a uh, kind of a dynamic asteroid that changes in size, right? Let me just pull that one up. If you want to go further and create an asteroid that changes in size, you can add the concept of a variable into a list. So this level right here was really enjoyable for students who wanted a challenge. And the nice thing to realize is that if you look at this from a different perspective, not so much as a collection of just lines, but a collection of absolute value functions, you can actually graph the asteroid in two equations. And it does the same thing. And what's really cool about this as well is that you can play with other variables to get other nice shapes and explore patterns. So Desmos, I think, really gives us a chance to look at complex or seemingly complex graphs and kind of extrapolate patterns um, in the process of creating them. Another nice thing that uh, came up as we played with this shape is that it really matters how you set up your equations. Um, this student what they did was they created variables that equal lists, and then they use those variables that represent lists in their equations. And this works great, right? But if you try to make the asteroid too large, at some point it disappears and you get an error. And this is fun because now you can talk about why this might happen. In other words, what, what, be, what might be less efficient about these equations right here or too taxing for the program? So that's a fun conversation to have in a, a math classroom, right? Not only how do we set this up at, in a way that's simple for ourselves, but how do we teach Desmos to deal with this shape in a way that's manageable for Desmos? So I'm, I'm really enjoying it. Thanks.